whether you need it to be just a simple stomp box uh, or whether you need it to be a full-blown rig, it kind of does all that. <laughs> Ah, HX Stomp. This is very exciting. You guys know I'm a Helix fan, so this is this is cool. The box is small, so it can't. Oh my God, it is tiny. Yeah. So they told me it was going to be. Oh, it's really small. They told me it was going to be small, and it's small. So this is, as I understand it, a Helix. Full blown effects, amp modeling, kind of the whole nine yards, but in something that is ah, the Christmas morning. The size of, yeah, a small effects pedal, really. Mind blowing. Tiny. So I can't wait to see what this thing does. It's a full blown helix, so you can use this thing for amp modeling. You can use it as an interface. It's got a USB port on it. So you can plug this right in and use it into a, a, a DAW or whatever to record as an audio interface. So amp modeling cabinet impulses, tons of different effects, all that good stuff. But if you want, you could get this and also just use it on a pedal board, like for a delay or reverb or something like that. And they asked me to bring this little board today. And I thought if it's as small as they say, I bet it'll fit right there. And sure enough, it will uh, on my little board. So, you know, if you're a traditional amp kind of user and you use a little pedal board and you just need kind of a jack of all trades that does tons of different effects really well, this will do that. But if your entire amp rig went down and your pedal board doesn't work or whatever, you could actually plug this right into the PA. And this is your whole rig because it's got amp modeling and IRs, cabinet modeling and all that stuff in it too. It's pretty cool. What we got hooked up here right now is kind of cool. Um, basically, I'm plugged into this little pedal, this little old uh, dusty, dirty old pedal board I've had for years, and I'm running through it, but I've got nothing turned on in it right now. I'm coming out of it and going into the HX Stomp almost as if I'm just adding it. Well, it's exactly what I'm doing. I'm adding it as another pedal uh, integrated with the board, and then I'm coming out of there into this little deluxe amp here. And um, so just this sort of straight up. You know, that's just the sound of the deluxe with nothing. Okay, so there's the tone. And within about 10 minutes, I was able to make my first preset on this. And I was thinking, okay, let's really see what it can do. Let's make a preset with like maybe some compression and some delay and some reverb and use it for a, a bunch of stuff and get kind of a cool ambient sound going. So here's what I've got. Okay, so I, d I didn't even really do very much tweaking to the tone or anything like that. What I did was I got a, the deluxe compressor and then I've got uh, a uh, phaser going as well as a delay that's got swell on it built in. That's what's actually doing the swell. So as I play, it does an automatic kind of volume swell thing. And then I'm using uh, the Searchlight to reverb, which is a really cool new ambient, one of the newer kind of line six reverb algorithms and it's, it's got a really beautiful sound. And the way that I've got this foot switch on the HX Stomp configured, I figured this out in the global settings, you can either make this an all bypass button uh, for, for the entire pedal or else you can make it a tap tempo. Or So you can kind of configure this thing like with the other Helix units in a number of different ways. You can sort of make the foot switches do what you want them to do. So by just hitting that, now I can bypass. Not bad for 10 minutes, pretty cool preset. So yeah, the workflow seems very similar. Um, I haven't cracked a manual or anything like that. So if you're used to using the Helix, just within a few minutes of kind of poking around on this thing, you'll probably be able to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, the little screen on it looks almost exactly like the big Helix. So you've got kind of a, your, your you know, 
order of pedals or your signal chain right there, uh, you know, defined right there on the screen. And it's really easy to see even for a guy with really bad eyes like me. Uh, I think I could see this on the floor. So it, it uh, long story short, it's going to be pretty comfortable for you to use if you're familiar with the other Helix units already. Okay, we made another preset. Uh, so with this one, what I wanted to do is try integrating the HX Stomp with my pedal board. Try using a pedal or two on the board and then use uh, the HX Stomp for some other additional stuff. So I'm on the middle pickup position on my guitar. Plugged right into the deluxe over here. Nothing's on right now. So I'm gonna turn on this overdrive here. This is a Rocket Tim Pierce, a real cool sounding drive. Get a bit of drive going. What I decided to do is make kind of a swampy, cool, like tremolo reverb kind of sound on the HX Stomp. So once again, in about, I don't know, seven minutes or something like that, I called up the 63 spring and uh, the harmonic tremolo and got a really cool sound, so. So going back a number of years, I guess it was around 2011, I got the Line 6 H9. I had that on my pedal board for a long time. It was bigger than this, um, but even at the time, it was quite small for what it was. And, and people you know, gravitated towards that unit as well as the M5, I think, because it was kind of an awesome jack of all trades. It did everything, basically every single effect that you could, you know, you need a, a filter or you need a chorus, you need a flanger, you need a fuzz, whatever you needed, it was in there. Um, so this thing, even more powerful and even smaller, and to me the quality of the effects has improved. It's even better. So when you're calling up something like, once again, the spring reverb, for instance. You know, it really sounds a lot like a real spring in the amp. I could guess I could turn up the reverb on the amp and see what that sounds like. <laughs> I mean, it's a really terrific sounding spring reverb, actually. So, you know, um, the quality of the effects in the thing, I don't even think about it, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's, it does what you want, and if it's, you know, you can, you can go back and forth all day on the, uh, you know, is this exactly the same as my Vincent or my, my Echoplex or my actual spring reverb and stuff, but at the end of the day, when you gotta get on a plane and go do a gig or go to a session or whatever, like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, that's kind of like, it, it, maybe it's the older I get, but the last thing on my mind is that stuff. I want something that does the job. It's reliable. You know, with these new Helix units, they're just nailing this, the sounds of the effects, that's for sure. Okay, so for this sound, I wanted to see um, if I could just dial up a boost kind of at the end of the pedal board. So if I've got my clean tone, which I do, and then I'm hitting my, uh, my drive on my board here for like a rhythm overdrive. But now what, if a, what about if I want a part to stand out going you know, into, into the amp, I want to kick it harder and make it kind of jump out and get a little bit louder. So I dialed up the kinky boost on here and just whatever the, it, it comes up as actually sounds really good. I'll show you what it sounds like without the overdrive on the pedal board. <laughs> Okay, so it definitely boosts the amp and gets louder, drives it into distortion a little bit. So if I, if I turn on the overdrive here and then turn this on, I feel like I can get a nice sort of bump up in volume and it kind of makes for a cool lead sound. Okay, so one observation I'm just making right now as I'm making this next preset, I wanted to dial up the, the Tima uh, distortion sound or overdrive sound in here and then put some echo after it. But before I even come up with the delay, one thing I notice is that when you start with a blank preset and you just start calling up 
uh, effects on this thing and turning them on, they sound good, like, right out of the gate. That's pretty cool. Like, in other words, you know, it's not like, oh, I gotta get in there with the knobs and tweak. Like, listen to just the way the, the Tima uh, distortion comes up. That sounds pretty damn good to me, and if I turn it off and then I go to my my analog overdrive pedal on my board. It's a pretty closely comparable sound. You're hearing the difference between a digitally modeled overdrive pedal and then this guy. I haven't even dialed it in yet, actually, and I think I could get those to sound just about identical if I wanted to. Okay, so here's another preset that I made. This is a lead tone. I'm using the vintage digital delay and I'm stacking two drives, the Tima and the, uh, what's the other one I used? Oh, the Minotaur. Yeah, so two drives stacked together for a lead tone and all the effects are coming out of this thing right now. I'm just gonna play a little bit. power that is getting packed into this little device, you know, these days, it's crazy. It's really, really impressive, and I think it's going to help a lot of guitar players, uh, you know, in their quest to, to get killer tones and just kind of get the job done. Okay, so what I'm doing now is uh, I've got the HX Stomp plugged in through these two Line 6 power cabs here. These are set in full range mode, so basically I'm just using these for monitors, so just monitoring the guitar sound with these. They're passing the signal through to uh, the recorder. So what you're hearing is basically this plug direct. I mean, you can imagine using this thing in a direct scenario, either to like a recording interface or maybe to a PA system at a live gig. The goal here being, this is my whole guitar sound. Everything's coming out of this. So let's start by making a really clean, basic preset. So I'm gonna use uh, the US Deluxe Vibrato amp model. And uh, I've got an impulse response loaded up of a, a Celestian Blue style speaker in an open back 112 cabinet. I've got some other effects going in the patch and stuff, but none of them are turned on right now. You're just going to hear the amp model and uh, with the speaker simulation, okay? <laughs> Okay, so that's just kind of a very straight up kind of American style clean with uh, with a Celestian Blue style speaker in a 112 cab. Now on my clean sounds, generally speaking, I like to use compression. So I've dialed up the red squeeze compressor here and I'm just gonna unbypass it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is add some more effects. Uh, so I go through here and I get to the 70s chorus. I love the Line 6 70s chorus uh, that's in the Helix and this one sounds exactly the same because it is a Helix. Uh, I'm gonna unbypass it and now you're gonna hear the sound split into a really lovely wide stereo. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so I got some chorus going. I'm gonna move over now to my delay. Turn that on, I got the transistor tape model up here. So uh, I'm going to store that preset because that sounds really cool to me. Let's hear something more high gain now. So uh, this is the, I believe they call it the uh, Placator amp model. And then I've got a uh, impulse response dialed up of uh, a 412 cabinet with uh, greenbacks. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty satisfyingly crunchy. So once again, I'm using this thing as the whole guitar rig right now. I mean, this is just plugged direct. And these are the tones that you could get if you wanted to record it like this right into, uh, say, your DAW, or uh, maybe you want to use the thing live and run right into a PA system. And you're going to be able to get tones exactly like this. I think it's pretty damn impressive. So modeling's definitely come a long way. I'm an amp guy. I mean, I got to say right out of the gate, like, you know, I love my amps. But the tone and the response and the feel of modeling has come so far, to be honest. And you can't beat the versatility. So, you know, switching from something like this dirty tone. Being able to go all the way from that and quickly move to You know, it's a difficult thing to do in the real amp world to be able to move from a distorted sound 412 with greenbacks, then go right to an open back 112 EL84 vibe with all that, uh, you know, beautiful compression and and uh, not to mention the stereo delay and all that stuff happening. So, and you notice the roll down too, that the thing responds and cleans up really nicely when I'm rolling down the volume on my guitar. <laughs> You know, so to be able to move from one sound to another so quickly and be able to get all these tones out of something that is the size of, I don't know, some people's wallets I know are this big. <laughs> all right, so I'm so glad my friends at GC asked me to come by and check this thing out. This is my first time seeing it. Um, they got it in stock, and so you got to check it out. I think that this thing is kind of a no-brainer. Um, you know, I'm going to use it for sure. I mean, look at the size of it. It sounds killer. It does 40 million things. What's not to like? <laughs> so uh, you can check it out uh, ASAP at your local GC. See ya.